April the 23rd. Time is 7 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. My name is uh, Detective Ricardo Suarez. I'm accompanied here by uh, Detective Sergeant Ruben De Leon and Detective Joe Vecchio. Here in front of us we have Pablo Lucio Vasquez and I'm uh, about ready to read him as a Miranda warning before we ask him any questions. Do you understand your rights, sir? Yes, sir. Do you wish to give me a statement on what happened on April the... Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. I need you to sign, sir. Here, and put your initials on each. Okay, Pablo, can you tell us... Uh, what occurred? I want you to start since Friday. This is 18-year-old Pablo Lucio Vasquez. Pablo is currently being interviewed regarding the murder of a 12-year-old boy by the name of David Cardenas. In this moment, Pablo is reciting the initial moments from the evening of Friday, April 18th, 1998. He is stating that he and his 15-year-old cousin, Andre Rafael Chapa, felt the urge to get intoxicated. So the two drove to a party in Donna, Texas. There, the two met up with another friend by the name Derek. At the party, the three passed around a bottle of 40% alcohol, drank several beers, smoked weed, and indulged in powdered stimulants. Then, as Pablo and his cousin decided to leave the party around 12 a.m., David Cardenas followed along. What, what time did you guys go home? It was about 12. I didn't know where the little guy was going to go. He took off what little guy? David. I don't know what is he going to do, so he called us, he went with us, they gave us the right to the house. And me and Andy were there, and he went, he went to the back, and went inside, and I don't know, did a good thing, and blacked out, and started hearing voices in my head. And I told my cousin that somebody told me to kill him, kill him. So um, I snuck up on him, and I hit him, and he fell down. What did you hit him with? The pipe. Where'd you get the pipe at? It was on the floor, like where he was at. And he looked at me at first, but then, and he looked at me too, and like, I guess we didn't have any more feeling or nothing. Did Andy try to stop you before you hit him? No. Well, he didn't say nothing. Like, he just looked at me and like, he felt something was wrong. And like, so I hit him. And Where'd you hit him at? What was he doing when you hit him behind the head? He was looking at me. And then he said something, I don't know. And I hit him like three or four times. And he was right there. And he was still alive. When you hit him three or four times, where did you hit him at? He was still alive. And and he told me, you killed, you killed him. And I go, no, he's not dead. He's still alive. And I got him. And we took him, and Andy had the show, and my cousin had a knife in his pocket. Your cousin who? Andy. Okay. And I saw him, and I got the knife, and I cut his throat. And then he was still like, talking and stuff. When I picked him up, he was, I just put him on my shoulder like that, and I carried him. And I threw him on the floor because he was too heavy. And I dragged him from my hand. I picked him up, I dragged him. And he was still saying something, and I picked it up in the air, and the blow was dripping, and it got all over my face. So I, I don't know, and something just from drink, drink, like I took a drink of water in the morning, and you drink, you drink what? His blood, and I don't know, and my face was covered with his blood, and I put him down because I felt weird. I don't know, and then my cousin said he's still dying or something like that. And I took him across the road in that area where they found him. Okay. And he was saying something. And my cousin got to show him and hit him like five, six times in the face. All I knew was that, yeah, he was really. Good. When he hit him on the face, what was the guy saying? What was David saying? He was saying something. I don't know. He was mumbling something. Any words that you can remember? No. He no. was just saying, like, oh, like, like, I don't know what he said. He looked for something, but he was saying something. But yeah. I heard his. I seen his blood gushing out really well. And I started, I panicked. 
So we took them back there, and we started digging the hole. And the dirt was too hard, so we just dug a little tiny hole. And I put them there, and I was just finding stuff to cover them up with, and we covered them. And I put grass and pieces of wood on them. And by the time I realized, I took off his ring, but I lost it somewhere right there. And his chain was busted. I threw that away too. Although Pablo stated in this moment that he threw away David's ring and chain, it is later clarified that he either immediately pocketed these items or he went back to retrieve them. And the next morning I woke up, I had, I really had done something bad, and I just wanted to get out of it. And I waited all day there, just thinking about what I had done. After providing a graphic description of the disgusting murder that Pablo and his cousin had committed during the early hours of Saturday, April 19th, Pablo then stated that the two went to sleep inside his cousin Andy's house. They woke up to Andy's mother asking the two why they were covered in blood. Andy replied that they had gotten into a fight, but things were okay. As Pablo laid there during the morning hours, his body and mind began to sober up from the concoction of party favors consumed the night before. His ability to recollect these murderous events became stronger and he found himself consumed with intense guilt and remorse. He asked his cousin if he should find a way to end it all, before having to suffer at the hands of the law and the repercussions that are likely to follow. Andy replied, no. Pablo continued to spiral as he continued to sober up throughout the day. And on that evening, less than 24 hours after the murder, Pablo made the decision to admit to his uncle, who is also Andy's father, that he knows he had done something bad. What, what exactly did you tell him? I had done something bad that I had hurt some kid really bad. And who'd you tell this to? My uncle. Who's your, what's your uncle's name? John. John? Yeah. So you told him Saturday night that you had done something bad? Yeah. But then I... Did, I, did I, you I show him the chain? Yeah, I showed him the chain. I said, look, this is what I took away from, but I threw it away the same time that, that same night I threw it. Because I was in the, in the car and threw it. I touched it. My cousin told me, man, you guys did something to What? Me. What cousin? My cousin Jeremy. Jeremy what? Chapa. He asked me, where's there? Where's there? I go, I don't know. I think you went home. But I was lying to him. And me and my cousin, we knew it that uh, we had killed him. Mm. During the Saturday after the murder, Pablo's other cousin, Jeremy, who is Andy's brother, became increasingly suspicious of Pablo and Andy. He was notified that David did not return home and he became extremely concerned as to what circumstances may have caused this. He then discovered a small pair of sandals, and what he believed to be a small piece of human bone. So what did you do with the sandals? I don't know. I got some glue from the PCP pad, the pipe, from the PCP pipe. I poured it on there, and I told my cousin to leave. My cousin told me to leave, because he's the one that found them. He goes, who's the these, who's the these? And I said, you know, those are mine. So I got him, and I put some of that stuff on, and I made it. And we got up, and we, I stayed there until they melted. And then I dug a little hole, put that over. Um, you lit it on fire? Yeah. Where's, what, what about uh, the sweater? What was he wearing, David? Um, a wet shirt, I think. I don't know how, where it came up. Pablo would then go on to describe the story that he told Jeremy as well as his aunt and uncle, regarding the large amount of blood that was found covering a portion of the backyard. Apparently, he claimed that this blood came from a possum that was attacking the family dog. He stated that in a heroic moment, he quickly grabbed the possum by the neck and spun it around several times, causing the blood to cover more area than one would likely expect. He then clarified to the officers what really happened. Pablo stated that when he had lifted David onto his shoulder to transport him to the shallow grave, Pablo rotated his body too quickly, causing the open wound on David's neck to separate and dump even more blood onto the lawn. David's body was found dismembered, with one foot, one arm, and half of another arm removed. This led investigators to believe that following the murder, Pablo took additional steps to attempt to dispose of the body. However, when this proved unsuccessful, he created another narrative. When Pablo was asked directly about this dismemberment, he claimed that he had no idea. Who cut off his leg and his foot? Nobody did. did There's probably an animal that smelled him or something. Could be. I don't know if my cousin hit him with the shovel or how I found over, but all I know is that I just remember hitting him with the pipe and cutting him. Did you see your cousin 
Do it to him. Well, he was just look, freaking out on him like, "Man, we killed him, we killed him." He was just telling him, like, "Man, we killed him." Like, oh, okay, going going back to when you hit him, when you hit him in the back of the head, you didn't think the piece of bone popped out. That's when we went back from to where? Him, from the back, somewhere right here. And I saw it on the mattress. But I left there to know it wasn't, but I picked that piece of bone up. I remember not thing, and I put it in my pocket. And the next morning when I woke up, it was there, and my cousin Andy got it, and he flushed it down the toilet. And he did. And I'm sorry for killing that little guy, but if I had a chance to go back in time, I would have never done it. We were trying to cut off his head. We were, they were trying to cut off his head to show kept hitting him and hitting him. Who was? Me and I because we were like, we were trying just to tear him. Well, what was your reason for trying to cut off his head? The devil was telling me to take it away from him. Who was? The devil was telling me to take it away from him, to keep it, to keep it, and it couldn't come up. But I was just freaking out because I was hearing that. And what about Andy? What was he hearing? I don't know, he was just like, I don't know, he was just, I don't know, he was just like, Going with it too, I guess. Did Andy drink blood? No, he was just, he threw up because he saw me doing it. Did you go back the next day on Saturday to go see him? No, I didn't go back. You never went back after that night? What about Andy? Did he ever go back? I don't think so. Like, we didn't feel nothing at the time because we were all f***ed up. We were both the walls and we were all How did you guys pick out the spot? And we just, I just walked to her, I don't know, I just walked, just walked in, and, and we went and just put them there, we put them there. We started digging, and I, and, and, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore, because it was amazing. I was sweating out the blood, and like, I was realizing I had done something messed up, and, and I still kept hearing that, that man, she was just like, I don't know, they like one side of my head telling me you did it wrong, you did it wrong, the same time, go ahead, keep doing it, keep doing it. They like telling me to get, kill him again, keep, take his head off, keep doing it. Kill him, kill him. You're right, too. Angie? Uh -huh. She said, what you gonna do? I wanna see that little boy dead. And I, go, I guess he's at his house, I don't know, I haven't seen him. And I was lying to her, I knew, I knew that we had done something to him. Did Danny ever give you a reason for you to do this? Who? Danny never gave you a reason? Uh, David? Little, the little boy you referred to, David? No, he was just like a little angel, man. He was like a little what? A little angel. Is there anything else you want to say about what happened? No, I'm sorry for doing all that, man. I'm sure not. And I need some help. But, uh, was Andy drunk? We were both drunk. We were both in the door storm. We were doing it. I did some coke that one too. Do you think you did it because you were drunk? Yeah. I didn't think about it. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, psychosis refers to an episode in which an individual has a break from reality. Drug-induced psychosis, also known as substance-induced psychotic disorder, is simply any psychotic episode that is related to the abuse of an intoxicant. This can occur by taking too much of a specific drug, or by having an adverse reaction after mixing multiple substances. It can also happen during severe withdrawals from a drug, or if the individual has an underlying mental health issue. You. Though it's not fundamentally accurate that taking any kind of drug can suddenly trigger a new and severe mental illness, it is well documented that mental illness is a predictor of substance abuse, and someone prone to psychosis can be triggered by becoming overly intoxicated. When it comes to non-prescription intoxicants, the likelihood of psychotic symptoms appearing and which of these symptoms are being experienced varies from substance to substance. For example, Taking a large amount of cocaine all at once can cause psychosis within minutes. It is also well documented that psychosis from cocaine or amphetamine use typically produces delusions or auditory hallucinations. In the case of Pablo Vasquez, it is entirely possible that Pablo may have been entirely truthful regarding the state in which his mind was operating. He may have been experiencing some form of mixed drug-induced psychosis. 
However, this does not simply provide this scumbag an excuse for brutally murdering an innocent 12-year-old boy. A deeper analysis of this case and of Pablo's mental state has been completed. And while he may have been experiencing the hallucination that he claims were directing him to commit this crime, Pablo still had the ability to reason. This was determined based on the concealing steps that he took following the murder. Steps like attempting to bury or hide the body, attempting to eliminate any of David's clothing or remaining evidence, and even holding on to the items that belonged to the victim. All of these steps were a clear indication that Pablo was still in a state of mind that allowed him to determine right from wrong. Pablo was charged with the first-degree premeditated murder of David Cardenas, and his trial began in 1999. Pablo's attorneys attempted to save Pablo from execution by claiming that he was mentally ill and therefore should not be held entirely responsible for his actions that night. However, these claims were swiftly refuted due to the evidence of his ability to reason. Pablo Vasquez was then sentenced to death, and his 15-year-old cousin Andy was sentenced to 35 years after pleading guilty. Pablo served 18 years on death row in the Polinsky unit near Livingston, Texas, before approaching his execution date. And on April 6, 2016, Pablo Lucio Vasquez was executed by lethal injection at the Huntsville unit in Huntsville, Texas. He was given a chance to say any last words. Pablo said, I'm sorry to David's family. This was the only way that I can be forgiven. You got your justice right here. As the lethal dose of pentobarbital began taking effect, he said he was feeling a little dizzy. He then said, see you on the other side. Raising his head off the gurney pillow and looking towards two of his sisters, his brother-in-law, and his cousin. He snorted loudly once, then dropped his head back to the pillow and took a few quiet breaths before all movements stopped. Pablo Lucio Vasquez was pronounced dead 24 minutes later at 6.35 p.m. This execution marked the 6th in Texas and the 11th in the United States in 2016.